Cindy Toucher, and I'm trying to get in position because we got all kind of stuff going on today. I'm here with Candy Kane, who is one of my longtime friends. Long time and, friends. And um, how long have we known each other? I was thinking about that the other day. It has to be at least, how old are your children? 20. Okay, 30 and 27. So. Well, I painted all the animals, but one of them's nursery. Yeah, yeah. So, Murphy, my son, who's 27, had a jungle room, and I bought, I met Candy because I bought she, one of the things that she, she paints all kinds of stuff. She's an artist, and um, I had bought some, some animals that she had painted. That was um, kind of the main thing I was buying from you was animals, and then I realized you did so much more. But um, one of the things that she is in the Craftsman's Guild for, or, I mean, the, the, what she is in the Craftsman's Guild for is her batiks and it's um it's a craft that not very many people are doing anymore and um i mean it's an old i mean is it right. like, like indians and stuff I mean, it's an uh ancient indonesian style of dyeing fabric where they would uh the indonesians would paint on uh dye rather muslin uh -huh. i use silk they would gather beeswax heated in a kettle over a flame then they would create their dyes from berries or whatever they could come up with, and then stamp a pattern, heat the beeswax till it became a liquid, stamp a pattern on the cotton muslin with either uh, a leaf, uh, a piece of fruit, mm -hmm. and it would create a wax resist, and then they would dip that cotton muslin into the vat of dye, and where the beeswax is, it resists the dye. So it would have the pattern mm -hmm. on there. So, yeah, that's how they make fabrics and artwork and and everything but she's taken that to another level and she's going to be demonstrating this while we talk today which is going to be so much fun I like so t tell us what you do first well first um what i have over here is a crock pot that is has gulf wax paraffin i just dropped some gulf wax into the crock pot and i've already had it heated up i've got my wax brushes these cannot be used for anything except wax i've got my procyon colored water dye all mixed it starts in a powder form and then i add water to my uh dye to make it into a liquid form which you'll see that soon i have all of my colors lined up in the color spectrum order and i love color that's what i'm really known for so i'm really prepared uh to just dive into it a lot of people don't know that silk, a china silk, rips evenly. It's a good thing because I can I don't, I can cut a straight line because I taught art for 30 years. But <laughs> you'll have that corner, Cindy. Okay. All you have to do is make a little cut and people are like, why are you ripping silk? It rips perfectly <laughs> even. So that makes my job a lot easier. So yeah. you so you can just tear it whatever size if you're sure. gonna do a right. big piece like this and um Well what I planned with this one is this is a sixteen by twenty inch stretcher strip. So I know that I I measured it last night. So I'm going to if you'll hold this right here, Cindy, okay. the stretcher strip. And I'm just gonna make a little line that shows all right, I got it from here. Thank you. Okay. Make a little line and then I'm going to design a piece that will fit onto that stretcher strip in the end. Okay, so you're gonna start, you're gonna paint a peacock? I thought about doing a peacock because the peacock is pretty cool to me because um, in college, when I did batik as my, uh, working on my fine arts degree, my senior project, my professor felt like I was strong in the batik area. Uh huh. And I got tired of waxing and dipping because you can only use analogous colors. Colors next to each other on the color wheel. If I waxed, and dipped in yellow, I'd have to let it dry, then I'd have to wax the yellow, dip it in blue, what color would it turn? Green. Green, so I wanted to, <laughs> It's a test. I, I wanted to use more colors than just analogous colors, so wow. I thought, well, you know what? I wanna do a peacock, but how am I gonna achieve the yellows, blues, greens, violets, all those colors in one piece if, you know, they're, they're not analogous colors, so I decided to cheat and paint my dye on. And I used paraffin wax instead of the beeswax because it is a softer wax. Oh. Feel that? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Is this kind of like a, 
like what when you go to, like to get your manicures sure. and pedicures is what they oh. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to start. I've got my brushes heated and my wax, and I'm just going to go ahead and. Oh, and she's like, you can kind of see the body that she's on. Okay, I'm going to ask you the question that probably everybody that meets you for the first time asks you. Mm -hmm. Even though I've known you a long time and no, but I'm going to ask you just because I know everybody watching wants to know. Is your real name Candy Kane? My real name is Candy Kane. Only my birth certificate. <laughs> There's no Candace. And my middle name is Sugar. I'm kidding. Okay. <laughs> My father uh, was Tom Lee Kane, and he grew up in East Texas, and he probably sat around thinking, well, if I ever have a daughter, I'm going to name her Candy. So I'm Candy Lee Kane, and he was Tom Lee Kane. Oh. So isn't that cool? It really is, because it just, you know, sets you apart. Everybody, when I say Candy Kane, people know, oh, the artist, because you're the only one in town that we know of. Maybe there's others. I don't know. But, and now she's drawing the feathers on here. Mm -hmm. And this is all just drawn with the wax. And the wax will dry, I imagine. It's, it's already dry. Okay. You touch that right there. Yeah. See, and it's... Oh, yeah. It's so already... It's already um, you know, you can compare it to doing an Easter egg where, as a child, we would, or maybe some adults still do, write <laughs> your name on the egg... Oh yeah, with a with a wax, like, and then crayon, you dip it. And clear crayon, it comes in the little right, cup. and then you dip it into the dye, mm -hmm. and the wax resists the dye. So this is the same process. So I'm just so while you're working, let me just ask you. I don't know if people realize this or not, but being a members of the Craftsman's Guild in Mississippi, that is not an easy thing. It's not like you pay a membership fee and join. Correct. It is like a very intricate, um, detailed. Thing to be voted into and how, how does that work um well you have to obviously fill out the application and submit i believe it's five photographs of work that you've completed in the past three years and three original pieces and then that work goes before a standards committee of which i am on the standards committee now oh. and so on the standards committee we have Craft people who are um, specialists in different areas, whether it's glass blowing, uh, throwing pottery, weaving. Mm -hmm. So we have woodworking, wood, wood turning, and we get together and um, go through each submission individually, and we, on a silent ballot, give, I'm gonna say, a grade. Uh -huh. and make comments yeah. and then we have uh, people who average that out and either you get in or you don't but if you don't get in the first time we encourage people to continue to try um, the first time I ever submitted I was rejected and I just went back and took notes of what they told me would help my work improve and did it and then I was fortunate enough so I've been a member a fellow member with my Fatigue, you have to be juried four times every three years to become a fellow. Oh. So then you're in for See, life. See, I didn't even realize that. Oh, yeah. So and you're a lifer. Yeah. I'm a lifer with my fatigue. I'm also uh, a double member with my mixed media, which I'll show you in a little yeah, while. Yeah, we'll talk about that in yeah. a little while. So, so and actually, I'm coming up for another jury process. It will be my third for my mixed media. Okay, and now you went to Southern. I did. Go got, Eagles. Go Eagles. Got a fine arts degree. Uh-huh. Taught and, school for 31 years. And you taught school. You taught art. Um, I know you taught at Lanier. I, I retired from Lanier. And did you teach somewhere before that? I was at Lanier six years, Ridgeland High School, four years, Callaway High School for 14 years. Oh my gosh. And um, taught art, which APS, elementary art rather, for f uh, five years where I rotated and taught all the fourth, fifth, and sixth graders at three different elementary schools in one week. Oh my gosh. Yes. That, oh, that, <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's amazing. And then I taught two years in Hattiesburg. Okay, so that's 30-something? 30 31. 
31 years you taught mm -hmm. and okay and then what did you do because, because besides just teaching she was also the tennis coach correct yeah and and probably all kind of other stuff you know teachers at public school have to just pitch in and do all kind of stuff so but kids. I remember thinking on top of all that you do because she's teaching school and at the time this is when I first met you you were teaching school but then you were also doing a lot of weekend um, you know, events and shows, taking your art and selling it. And I thought, I cannot believe you that there's something else. Like, how do you have time to do all this? But um, but I know, being a public school teacher, you kind of just have to do what you have to do. Correct. And a single mom. Yeah, yeah. So, before I start dying, I'm going to show you something. See how this drip down here? Yeah, there's some little, you probably can't see it from that far away, but there's some little drips on the bottom. Right, and I tell my students or anyone who's in one of my uh, workshops, there aren't any mistakes. People, adults are more afraid to do this than children, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn these mistakes into part of my design, so I'm gonna throw some. Uh, make some more little sprinkles. Uh-huh, just to give it a little bit of dimension, if you will. It is. Now, we're ready to die. Yay, the fun part. So I'm gonna start, I've got a lot of blues over here, and actually I'm going to move my crock pots out of the way. And I don't know if y'all can see in the background, we have another guest here, Ruger, <laughs> who's wagging his tail, sitting back here in the chair. You can probably see him behind Candy. He's <laughs> That's a Ruger boy. Is that a boy you have a pink vest on? Uh, there's a story behind that. Okay. <laughs> we'll save that for another day. <laughs> but, um, so anyway, what I have is, I have so many sponge brushes because once you use that sponge brush in one color dye, right, you, can't put you it keep in it in that dye. So that's yeah. why I have one brush for every color. We have so many brushes mm -hmm. there. Okay. So I'm going to start with some, just some turquoise. I have all my dyes. Ooh, that's pretty. Thank you. I love color. And that's one of the things that drew me to your paintings mm -hmm. to start with, but they were so colorful. I mean, I liked the subject matter of the animals at the time, which since then I've, I've bought other things of yours that were not animals. But, Thank um, you. <laughs> but I still, I go back, I think the last thing I got from you was a little monkey. And Paul got me a flamingo for Christmas last year. He sure did. Um, but you were at the um, Chapel of the Cross um, Day in the Country, and I saw you there and I got a little monkey. Mm -hmm. Because of my grandchildren, I call them my grand monkeys. Your grand monkeys. I needed the monkeys. I do shows all over. I love my artist friends and I, you know, some, some of my friends whom I've done shows with for 25 years, we say we're in the show business. And you know, some, some of them I only see once a year at that particular show, whether it's in Ocean Springs, uh -huh. Tupelo, Mississippi, um, Memphis, wherever. Yeah. Now these boutiques, this is a good size one, but you've done some huge banners. Correct. Like how big? The ones I've just finished for Mississippi Blood Services are... Uh, 12 and a half feet long by five, well, they're 58 inches wide. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow, that was a, quite a job. How did, do you do that? How, where, how were you stretching that <laughs> I Actually, I started them here and moved the furniture and started them in here and then moved them out to my garage. And so you've done, you've done projects for Mississippi Blood Services a couple of times. Correct, this is my second bid project. And who that. else have you done the big banners for? And that's a church? My, my church, St. James. Uh -huh. I designed the banners that hang during Pentecost. And then my friend William, I designed some more for him. His great idea that he wanted to have banners just to hang on Pentecost Sunday. So I did uh, the flames. Oh, They're really beautiful. I bet. Done, I've seen pictures of those, I think, on Facebook. I've done banners for uh, churches in Yazoo City. St. Luke's here, um, like the Methodist Church right up here in Madison. So I've been real fortunate with that. Okay, the next one got a little green. Okay, so I'm green in. And uh, and now Candy is 
very, very um, modest, and she probably will shoot me for asking you this, but you have won some awards, and I do want to mention those. Um, and you've been named the artist for lots of events, and, and um, well, I'm old. That's well, why I've done a lot of stuff in my life. That's, that no, explains no, that I'm no, old. You're just fabulous as well. <laughs> Gotten that check on me, you say that. <laughs> no, no, but she, um, she's been the artist for a lot of different events where she's the one who does the publicity poster and the, the t shirts. Who all has that been? I know one time, Ken Flea Market, um, um Shelby County Fair, Jewel Jam, uh, mm, Easter Seals, e Mississippi Easter Seals, uh, Mississippi Bar Association in 2010 and 2016. Hearts Against AIDS, International Balloon Fest, so. Wow, and you probably would think of more if you sat here a minute, I'm, I'm, because you, you've done so much. I had to turn my finger on. Okay. <laughs> All right, now I'm putting a little yellow in here. And see, I didn't really want to do that, so I'm gonna step right here real quick. And I can tell my students there aren't any errors. Miss, Miss Kane, I talked about myself in third person, can fix anything, so don't worry about it. If you think you messed up, you didn't. So I'm gonna go back over that. And I like that color better anyway, don't you? Oh yeah, I made it a really pretty turquoise. You see how I overlay the dark here and then oh, yeah, let the light like run that. into it uh -huh. like that? Yeah, yeah, to give it depth, I like that. A little darker to give dimension. And you've done a lot of artwork for some private collections, your Eudora Welty Library, and um, what are some others? Mississippi College, Highest Community College. Uh, what is this color? Let me see what this color is. Uh, yeah, I like that dark blue. Uh, <laughs> Highest Community College, Mississippi, Trustmark National Bank, Blue Cross. I don't know, like I said, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> don't say that because we're the same age. <laughs> We're not old. <laughs> We're not old. <laughs> All right, I want to go with some violets, so I'm going to reach over here and get my purple. See, I love that. Oh, that's so pretty. I like that. This is a deeper purple. Yeah. That's actually a raspberry. But when you overlay it with that blue, it will change that color. Yeah. So when you when you finish doing the actual painting of mm -hmm. all the colors, mm -hmm. because we're not going because of our space limitations, we're not going to be able to do this. But you're gonna you you iron this right? Correct. After it dries, mm -hmm. um, I've got my iron over there, but I put it on butcher paper and iron it. And what the, what it does is the heat from the iron melts the wax out onto the paper. And so it's not on the fabric anymore. I think that's anymore. a misuse preposition, but it's not on the fabric uh, anymore. That's okay, I'm not an English teacher, so. So, um, Lord, then you have y'all Y'all don't be, y'all don't be judging our prepositions, okay? <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna make me up here annoying now, because I know I don't even think about it. <laughs> I'm gonna come down here. School teacher. <laughs> oh, that's just a school teacher in me. that so what I'm going to do is put a little orange on top of that to so it's this little piece of blue this big that she's trying to get rid of okay <laughs> oh that's pretty it looks with, like shading under, uh -huh. like its wings are shading under the um and to balance color I'm gonna throw a little bit of just a touch of orange here and there just to balance it oh yeah that way your eye, it doesn't just focus on one area. It moves around. I think this is fuchsia. Isn't that pretty? That is pretty. Now, how do you decide on your subject matters of what you're going to paint? Is it what you feel like people are wanting to buy? Or if you're going to certain shows, certain places, certain things sell more? Or do you, I mean, do you just get in the mood? Or I know what, I know from the past what sells the most, but I always have the funniest requests. Do, do you have a, a cow? Do you have a penguin? 
<laughs> I have seen it. I've seen one in my life before. Have you? Yeah. <laughs> People collect pigs. Um, oh, you know the new thing lately is sloths. Has anybody asked for a sloth? I have yet to be asked to paint a sloth. I bet you that's going to be coming up because that's what the new thing is for people to collect. I've heard. Um, what do you think about that Ruger? Ruger. <laughs> <laughs> Ruger's wagging his tail. I think, Ruger, I think Ruger is a sloth in his real life. I think he's a spirit sloth. He's a happy boy. Because <laughs> he's just laying here. He doesn't care what we're doing. <laughs> now, what I'm going to do is just see what kind of step back and look at color balance mm -hmm. and make sure I've got everything. That's about it. People ask me also how long this takes to dry. Um, if it were pretty outside, you and I could take it outside and wave it up and down, it'd be dry within about less than 10 minutes. Oh, yeah. But it's raining outside, yeah. so it would probably not dry. Yeah. It would be more wet. <laughs> mm -hmm. We went outside right now. <laughs> Do you ever use a hair dryer? Well, no, you can't dry it with a hair dryer because of the wax. Because of the wax. Uh huh. I see. I like that. I think I, I like that too. I think it's beautiful. I think it's all the color. I love all the colors. A little bit more violent, right there. And there you go. I'm gonna take it off here and turn it around. Do you want me to untape over here? If you don't mind, please. Okay. Now, you also go back with a black marker in detail. Right, right. Hold on, real quick. That was a little bit pulled right there. I know this is going to run, so. It's so pretty and colorful. Isn't that pretty? So, so once it does dry, mm -hmm. you'll take off the, you'll iron it to get the wax off, mm -hmm. and then you'll go back with a marker and detail like the the eyes right. and the little. Actually, you know what I'm gonna drape this right here. Okay. Since that way it can drip down onto the tarp. Okay. Yeah, I like it. Okay, and now you're, oh, and let me just show one of these that is finished, and this is not a peacock, this is a different one, but just so you see kind of what the finished product looks like, let me, we can get a little bit closer here. See how she's gone back and done the detail with the black to just really define everything, but nice. isn't that beautiful, all the colors, and this is so soft, it doesn't have any of the, um, the wax still on it. It's, I, I wish, and it's even prettier in person because I can see what it looks like there and uh, it's so pretty and bright. And see, this comes back to the stretcher board that I used earlier. Mm -hmm. I built a stretcher yeah. board, cut a backing on my paper cutter, and then pull it like a stretch piece of canvas. So you don't and have to have a frame. It's The edges are all correct. nice and neat. And, and then, but I've seen people do, you know, frame them. Uh, yeah, I frame some them. of mine. That, yeah. that piece back there, you can't see it, but that's floated. Yeah. That is frame. Yeah. Isn't that pretty? And here's, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to hold these up. A couple of other, just, these are just an abstract. And she's done some really cool, like, wine glasses. And I actually have a, um. Angels. Angels are well, a good seller. <laughs> I have a nude, and right as I was about to say nude, she says angels to make me look like the bad one. Okay. I sell, I sell a lot of nudes. Actually, I'm delivering three large nudes tomorrow. So show us real quick your other. Um, now this is your other. Um, I'll switch sides with you. These are some. Um, now what is this called? This technique. Candy's textured paintings. <laughs> Let's start. <laughs> So these are yeah. like. Here. Let me hold it up closer to see if you can see how. Um, get the right light. See, I don't know if you can tell how it's textured. It's raised. Yeah, it stands up. And so show us how you do this. Well, what I do is I, I get, don't want to see me walking back and forth. Back. I get my caulk gun. Uh huh. I mean, this is like a real caulk gun, like from Home Depot. Correct. The cheapest one I'm fine. And <laughs> of course. <laughs> and I use the, you can only use acrylic caulk 
because if I do it on canvas and this is not right, this I'm doing on um, scrap pieces of wood. So you can, you can probably just go around. To you can't use any with silicone in it because it doesn't adhere to the canvas. Oh, okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm, what do you want me to draw you? Um, flamingo? Yeah, I love flamingos. And I do, I have, that's what I got last year for Christmas was one like this, this texture that was a flamingo. So what I'm going to do yeah. is just draw the flamingo. I mean, I can't draw with a pencil in my hand, I mean, tracing something. And she's just freelancing with a caulk gun. That's amazing. Make sure I get this leg right because it one of my shows my man tell me a flamingo's leg does not go that way. You have it incorrect, so I really try. Uh, it doesn't bend that way. Mm. Mine does. <laughs> <laughs> this is a special flamingo. <laughs> So you can kind of touch up. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's that. just I'm the. Get something off my wall real quick. So. Well, no. here, well, show the, show these that we got. Or, or is that what you were gonna? No, that's fine. Uh, so this is what we. Um, these are some we pulled ahead of time. That she's after this dries, you paint over that with acrylic. These are dry already. So you've started those and kind of in, in the process. The, the alcohol ones uh, seem to sell really well. Martinis, wine glasses, <laughs> beer mugs. Let's see if you can. Here's a margarita. I, uh, I can't get the right angle for that. I think it's because it's too white. Because yeah, of there's my, the margarita. My light. Yeah, that's really cute. And so that's all textured like she did it. Um, it shows better back there. Yeah. And then I paint it with acrylic paint, then I put a, uh, either liquid glass or a glaze on top of it. And it, and it stays like it keeps the paint from coming off. And then I and then you can just exaggerate with ink on those as well to do the eye, mm -hmm. eyes, eyelashes, and such. Let me get to where. Well, y'all, I'm going to put, I have, there's a lot of, um, of paintings that I have. I might put some pictures underneath in the comments too of Candy's paintings because I love them. And um, she has a Facebook page because two. Um, you have two mm -hmm. her candy paint and candy paint art that you did. <laughs> I, I'm going to tell you, I have a lot of friends who are artists, and I'm going to tell you this one thing about artists that artists can be fabulous artists that usually are not the best business people. And <laughs> So one time you were doing um, what was it? hand works, and I was going to help her for the weekend. And I was like, "Well, um, we can put on your Facebook page that you're going to be there." She didn't have a Facebook page. I was like, "Okay, let me create you a Facebook page." So I made a Facebook page for her. That for the longest time I would have to text her and go, "Candy, somebody's saying hello to you. You've got to answer them." You know, like on your, <laughs> she didn't even check it after I did. But then and I said. I said, and we can hand out your business cards. She didn't have business cards. So I went and, I mean, like within like a day, I just went and got like a real quick business cards printed real quick. And they were really cute. The border was like candy canes. Yeah. And it, had, it was Thank you. cute. It was, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> she hasn't gotten new ones since then. But anyway, but you know, the thing about, that's what I love about, um, artists is that they do just kind of like you know they're focused on the art and that's what you should be focused on see it's almost dry it is and almost dry see, now. this part up here uh -huh. in that short period of time it's almost dry yeah, yeah. and so you just iron it and get mm -hmm. that wax off and detail it and stretch it and i'll fix that little part right there it well, doesn't, doesn't bother me yeah. it doesn't bother me anyway well, so where where are you going to be next? If people are wanting to look at your art and, and buy your art, where um, what's coming up? We've well, got the spring things. Well, but. I've submitted applications to several, but I don't want to jinx it because you have to do it through this application. So I have gotten times, my response yeah, you back have to get, yeah. I know for sure I'll be in Tupelo at the uh, Gumtree Festival. I know for sure I'll be in Starkville for the Cotton District Festival. So I'm waiting to hear back from other shows that I've Submitted to it. I need you to be my secretary because I keep missing deadlines. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so be looking for it. And you can go to the to the um, Craftsman's Guild, right? And you've got work there. 
a little I'm bit. Assuming. Yeah, a little bit. I need to restock out there. Okay. So anyway, but you know, go on over to her Facebook page and check her out, and I'll put some some pictures of her paintings up. And I just thank you so much for thank doing you. this. With me. <laughs> And Thank you, like, Cindy. It's so much fun anytime I get to spend time with Candy Cane. Cool. So, anyway, and um, thank you for joining us. And I want to thank our sponsor today, Village Boutique in Madison. And she, Dana, owns the Village Boutique. She has the cutest clothes. She's been getting all of her spring things in, which will be here before you know it. And she's a cool chick, too. Uh, I love yeah. her to death. Yeah. Besides, besides her cool clothes, she's cool. Yeah. Yeah, and, and she is fun. Yeah, she's fun. And and the, the fall and winter things are going on sale now, which we're, you know, finally having a week or two of winter, which we, you know, sometimes get in Mississippi. So you can be wearing, you can buy those now and wear them now, which is great. So go by and check out the Village Boutique in Madison. And thank you for joining us. Be sure and follow Around the Town in the South. And you can see all of our other videos coming up. We've got some fun stuff, Cindy Cobb and I, coming up in the next week or two. So we'll be seeing you around the town. Thank you.